Everyone knows Paisley Road West is the heart of Glasgow, and when one is tired of Paisley Road West, one is tired of life, for there is, in Paisley Road West, all that life can afford. Unfortunately, this isn't a view held by the King of Glasgow, and when asked to write a Paisley Road West contribution for the Glasgow Wandering 3 video, he refused. On pressing him for reasons, he replied, The clue's in the name. It's a road leading to Paisley, which is in the West. No one wants to visit Paisley. Obviously, I ignore the King's beliefs and head to Paisley Road West every time I'm lucky enough to be in God's own city. And after a morning of heavy rain, or a lovely summer's day to Glaswegians, the weather cleared enough to visit my dirty, decayed, authentic, spiritual home. Usually, having crossed the Georgia Fifth Bridge north to south, I amble along Kingston Street, under the M8 flyover, experiencing a spring in my step where the dual carriageways of Paisley Road merge to commence Paisley Road West at which point I become lost in admiration of the weathered tenements and keep wandering westwards in a world of my own. But this time I had a specific destination, and it wasn't the Loudon Inn, which the King keeps telling me to enter and ask directions for Celtic Park. Bella Houston Park was my destination, more specifically the walled garden on the park's northeastern edge. Parks are magnificent, especially those possessing bandstands. Sadly, the 1896 Open Bella Houston Park can't boast such a structure, an omission no doubt due to the cruel prejudices suffered by the Paisley Road West area, in my ill-informed opinion anyway. Walled gardens tend to be set in the grounds of large homes, two fine examples being Burley House Stamford and Grimsort Castle Lincolnshire, and Bella Houston's garden was no exception. Before Bella Houston Park came into being, the walled garden was part of a substantial house, Ibrox Hill House. Writer John Bennett commissioned the house to be built soon after purchasing the land from the Ibrox estate in 1801, with the Scottish Architects Org website stating a new front was designed by David Hamilton in 1813. Merchant John McCall became the owner in 1816, and he, like all merchants, amassed his fortune via sweat from the workers' brows, no doubt. The house is no more, burnt and then demolished in 1934 according to one account, or demolished in 1914 from another source. To give an idea of the house's scale, in 1881 the Glasgow Herald listed the house and grounds for rent with these particulars. Three public rooms, ten bedrooms, two with dressing rooms, kitchen, laundry, servants' rooms, the house is supplied with Loch Catrin water, the offices consist of two double coach houses, stabling for six or seven horses and a buyer, and houses for butler, gardener and coachman. Like most walled gardens, Bella Houston's would have provided fruit and vegetables for the Ibox Hill House kitchen, and is described in the 1881 Glasgow Herald advert as Extending about an acre, the garden contains vinery, peach house and conservatory. The garden was acquired by Glasgow Corporation in 1905, which indicates Ibrox Hill House was running on a shoestring, or maybe not running at all by this point. For my early September visit, the garden had an attendance of one, me. This afforded the opportunity to punt about, camera in hand to my heart's content, and stroke the beautiful brick walls without the police being called. From the gardens, I ambled across to the former Ibox Hill House stables, now the Heritage Centre, and for the princely sum of one Scottish pound, became entranced with one of the finest displays of Glasgow history I've encountered. It's impossible to praise those involved enough. Evocative photos accompanied by informative interest in text. The Heritage Centre is a must-visit. 